Obviously, uh, the Malaysian story is one of the biggest stories in the world right now, but I think it's a diversion, quite frankly, from the Russia situation. There's no thinking about it. Uh, the Russia situation has, is accelerating towards massive uh, crises. We'll be breaking that down as our top story today, but uh, the Malaysian government and their head military official is saying it's conclusive someone hijacked the aircraft and now they are shifting attention to the pilot who was seen wearing anti-government t-shirts in the past, anti-Malaysian government t-shirts, uh, saying democracy is dead. And that he reportedly, after the transponders were turned off on the plane, made a radio comment and was the last person heard before the plane disappeared under the radar. And they're reporting that his family moved out and disappeared uh, the day before the disappearance. And that's red linked up on DrudgeReport.com. Deliberate action focus shifts to passengers' crew as new clues emerge. Quote, conclusive, someone hijacked jet may have sent signals on ground. Pilot, wife, and children moved out day before disappearance. Can a plane really vanish? Well, you have the pilots hijacking it and uh, more. So that's what's going on that front, and, and we'll, we'll talk about it some today. But quite frankly, it is not important compared to what's happening domestically to our liberties and the situation with Russia that the new polls show Vladimir Putin is nearing 85% approval ratings. He was at 60-something just a few months ago because of the Crimea-Ukraine situation. The globalists are just handing him an absolute bonanza right now. But they're handing themselves a political bonanza for the EU and Obama and the globalists out of the big war that is brewing over there. U.S. Navy destroyer to continue more Black Sea drills off the coast of Crimea. Russia says they electronically shot down a drone, a U.S. Predator drone, and they've got the tail number. Crimeans are choosing to join Russia in vote. Exit polls show with the polls now closing over there. It looks like uh, it's 90 to 10 percent uh, to join Russia. Used to be part of Russia. That's why. And, of course, uh, there's a story out of RT where RT points out five referendums the West has not taken issue with. And we're going to be looking at some of those referendums. And I'm not defending what Russia is doing here. Putin is ruling more and more with an iron fist. Uh, certainly, Russia has exploited Ukraine over the last 200 years. But ladies and gentlemen, NATO is far more sophisticated, far more evil, and wants to suck that country dry in ways Russia never has financially. And NATO, George Soros, and the EU absolutely started this whole thing a few months ago when they voted to not join the EU and are forcing this situation and poking the Russians. And so you have to say it's wrong. And that's why Ron Paul, who's an informed person and reads, no exaggeration, hundreds of news articles a day. Ron Paul's on next week. And every time I throw some wild card breaking story at him, he knows about it. Or some obscure bill or some factoid or history piece. He knows it. Ron Paul's uber smart, uber well read, uber bookworm hyper-intelligent for 77 years old. I mean, he's the real deal. The kind of doctor who half the time, I'm going into a Ron Paul Love Fest, would do half of his medical care free at the charity hospital. We're talking saint-like creature. And he says, the West is in the wrong, Russia's in the right, in the great balance. He said, Putin's no angel, but the West is starting us, and it's very bad. That's because he knows the facts. I mean, you know the facts, you know this is wrong. Real simple. And it lets Putin become a dictator as well. We'll be right back. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. 
Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield Nascent Iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield Nascent Iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888 253 3139. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. I order all those assembled to immediately disperse. It's a military mission in North St. Louis. Heavily armored vehicles are rolling into town. And don't be alarmed if you see those over the next seven days rolling through your neighborhood. If you see military helicopters flying low over Minneapolis, do not be alarmed. The guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will take all yes. weapons. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. Just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Enough. 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 The Department of Homeland Security is apparently on a huge ammo buying spree. It comes out to like 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem. Us. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. If you got a business, that you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. Mercury containing vaccines may help not harm kids, according to two new studies in the journal Pediatrics. Blackhawk choppers soaring through the night sky, but this is only a drill. Heavily armed officers in Watertown search for the suspect, house to house. It's a joint military training exercise involving local police, also military. In your apartment! I am in my apartment, sir. Go back inside right now! I am inside. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. The dramatic scene played out in front of our cameras. Parents grabbing their children and running after spending the night hunkering in their houses and then finding themselves face to face with the muzzle of a SWAT officer's rifle. They let them in the area, they told them they could come in, and now they're coming in like they're trespassers, punching and shoving people. We're not turning our guns in, and we're not running, and we're not backing down. If you want to come and take them. We are on the march. The Empire is on the run. Live from the InfoWars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. This is the heart. We are, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting worldwide on this Sunday edition, the 16th day of March 2014. We're going to be here for the next two hours. And you just heard that intro there, just a few examples of how our country is being converted into an authoritarian state so that special interest can basically subdivide our economy, shut down the free market, and bring in a form of crony capitalism that suppresses any form of true independence or free markets. We're going to talk about the missing Malaysian airliner, and they're now saying they think it may be the pilots, and there's evidence to that effect uh, where the family moved out the day before and disappeared. And they're saying he was an anti-government person who didn't like the Malaysian government. Uh, the government's now saying they believe it's a deliberate action. Uh, focus ships to passengers, crew. Uh, as new clues emerge, 
the, the head of the Malaysian military is saying that it's conclusive. Someone hijacked the jet, may have sent signal on the ground. Pilot's wife and children moved out day before disappearance. And that's what I said day one, looks like a hijacking. But with governments involved, you never know who really hijacked it. But that, that mystery continues to deepen. Now, here is the real top stories coming up today that, for me, I think are uh, most important and really matter. And that is the situation in the Ukraine that we're going to be breaking down in detail first. And then even uh, bigger news when it comes to free speech and the architecture of the global system. U.S. to relinquish remaining control over the Internet to the United Nations and private interest. And this is out of the Washington Post and is an extremely, extremely revealing story. So we're going to be breaking all of that down coming up after we get into the situation in Russia. And this is another headline of the Daily Caller. Ex-Bush administration official, Internet giveaway weakens cybersecurity, opens doors to web attack. That's just some of the news on that front we're going to be covering. No, it opens the door to web taxes. Yes, that's true. But more importantly, to international control of free speech and censorship of it, which the UN heartily supports. We're going to get to that coming up in the next segment. First off, U.S. Navy destroyer to conduct more Black Sea drills, Commander says. That's out of AFP. Here's another one out of AFP. Russia says it intercepted U.S. drone over Crimea, shot it down with electronic means, bringing down the Predator drone. They have the tail number. They say they brought it down from 12,000 feet. And again, they give out the tail number of the UAV MQ-5B of the 66th American Reconnaissance Brigade based in Bavaria. So things are certainly escalating very, very quickly. Here's another one. Bloomberg reports Crimea chooses to join Russia in vote. Exit polls show massive favor, 93% voting to leave the Ukraine government that three weeks ago overthrew the <laughs> elected government. Crimea vote on union with Russian troops now pouring in Reuters reports into what is now part of Russia, been part of Russia many times in history. New York Times reports as Putin's popularity soars, voices of opposition are being drowned out. This is making Putin more popular doing this. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts has an article up on Infowars.com with the headline, World War I All Over Again. And I agree with his historical parallels. We've had top political scientists and professors on months ago saying that's the parallels of what's happening with Russia. Russian jets and RAF face off, that's the Royal Air Force, off of NATO as NATO orders AWACS to Ukraine. John McCain has come out. We have video up on Infowars.com calling for military action against the Russians. Tomorrow, the Secretary of State, John Kerry, says they have a military and other options on the table if Russia doesn't pull out of Ukraine. You heard that right. This isn't, this isn't Kerry threatening Syria if they don't stand up and let al-Qaeda take over. This is now John Kerry and Obama threatening military action tomorrow. That's a few hours from now. They're about... 10 hours ahead of us over in Ukraine, depending on your time zone here in North America. And uh, they're now saying that uh, they have a deadline. And again, this is not the U.S. government. This is the globalists that have hijacked the U.S. that want a giant new war, a new political distraction from the derivatives and the, and the bid rigging and the scams and the total takeover of society. Russia has now blocked access to major independent.